it turns out to be really cool. All right, so I'm starting a live stream video here for those who want to learn more about the Luciferian path. I'm actually um, doing a video conference with another Carlos. Believe it or not, there's many of us out here and um, we're trying to to make this happen. Hola, Julita, ¿cómo estás? And um, we'll see. I've been trying to connect through his end. I cannot connect through my end. So let's see if, uh, if this works. So here's the issue with technology. It allows us to connect, but at the same time, it creates a lot of havoc sometimes. Carlos, well, I'm here. Bien, bien, bien. Yeah, see, so you have your camera. You have your camera forward. If we turn it sideways, it'll have the, the screen split like half and half. Okay, so I have it vertical now, and I was trying to do it the other way, and it, it wouldn't let me. So let me try. Hold on. No. So just keep it like no, this vertical? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So you want to try um, calling me again from your end, or? No, it's, it's fine. We could do it here. Okay. Um, cause already I'm already sharing it to my page. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and share it to the uh, Cauldron of the Black Flame. Uh huh. So, um, the reason why I wanted to um bring you in here, cause you know, obviously I have a lot of questions about Luciferianism, and you know, on how people start, also and also you know, being from a Catholic background or being from a Christian background, um, you know, how that affects us and, and the view. And I saw the video you made on YouTube last time and I was like astounded. I was like, wow, when you said that you started meditation and you started through the Hindu tradition mm -hmm. um, and how it brought you to that. So can you like First, explain to us, what is Luciferianism? Well, that's actually a great question. I, I knew that you were going to ask the, the first question. My, my intuition was telling me that. So I'm, I'm very prepared to, uh, mm -hmm. to answer that. So um, for me, being Luciferian is a self-empowering left-hand path philosophy. It, okay. and, and this actually applies to most Luciferians who, who follow this path. Um, there's two views. You can do it as a theistic approach and an atheistic approach. I'm more the theistic philosoph philosophical approach to this. And um, mm -hmm. honestly, it's a path of self-enlightenment, growth. Mm -hmm. It allows you to really challenge yourself, putting yourself out there. So one of the main things about this philosophy is that you're held accountable for everything that you do. Um, there's no outside factors influencing anything. Um, one is responsible for, for your own pro progress, I would say. And mm -hmm. that is probably one of the main tenets of being a Luciferian is always challenging yourself by overcoming those challenges and becoming the best person that you can be for you. You know, we, we tend to all, sometimes blame other circumstances or blame others, blame deities for... The, the, the reality that we live in. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really up to you. You are the one possessing the keys to your own success or failure. So in a nutshell, that is what being Luciferian is, is challenging oneself, challenging everything, and making your, your, your life very positive. But that depends on you. Okay. Yeah, because most most pages that I have joined, they show like a different picture, you know? They show Luciferians as a darker side, you know, um, what we call like devil worshiping or mm -hmm. Satan worshiping, you know, and doing evil things. And, you know, it's, I noticed that they make it more Hollywood. I use the word Hollywood, you know, they make it more darker than it seems to be you know when in my idea luciferian just basically mean you know being on the left side then rather than being on the christian side but believing more in yourself and believing that there's more out there than just one god you know um but 
the way that you touched it, it was no Hollywood. It was no drama. It was not trying to make Lucifer look into this like this badass demon and stuff like that, or or or, or make the the old goddess lurk, you know, sound with horns and picture them as evil right. as a lot of other Luciferians do. Which I like your input and, and your take on that. But how did you? How do you? How did you start with this? Well, you know, I. I yes. So I, I I've had a very interesting path when it comes to anything spiritual. So. As, as, as an Argentine, um, you know, I was baptized as Catholic. I mean, it happens in our, especially in our culture, you know, you're, you're, you're tend to, you're tend to kind of, you're, you're expected, you know, to be Catholic. So you go through the whole phases and everything like that. So, you know, as, as a young kid, I always questioned anything spiritual, but I, I wasn't at the capacity to really understand anything. So I, I would question here and there, but at the, you know, at, at the same time, I still followed what my parents would say and, and, and their spiritual paths. Um, and that's what they did. So um, I was a Catholic. I, went, I did my communion. I did my confirmation, all that fun stuff. Then um, around, I would say I was like 15 or 16, started to really question life and and question anything spiritual i i came across a lot of close personal deaths in my family um something that a lot of people don't know about me is that i lost two infant brothers and um i was very much a a teenager living through that experience and just seeing the the toll that it had on my parents and seeing um their their questioning right and then seeing how the Catholic priests and leaders would not really try to console my family and, and, and giving them an explanation kind of pushed me away from, from that path. So I started to seek what is out there that would make me feel good about myself first, right? And would help me then connect with the, the deities or, or deity or a power that's that's out there so i started to discover wicca and this was a totally new radical way of anything spiritual because i had no clue what wicca was had a few friends that had thrown some 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 little tidbits here and there but i was just very unaware of what it was so i started doing my own research i started doing my own type of uh of of meeting going to the library this was in the the late 90s so there was no no google well there was google but it wasn't to the capacity of of what it is now if 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 you wanted to to get information you had to actually go ahead and go to the library so that's what i did and um i started questioning and, and researching and i found that within the wiccan path i was starting to feel very good about myself and good about what had happened to to my brothers and 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 the afterlife and what i could do to 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 better myself spiritually so i started with that and then um i did that for about a few years and i started to kind of become a little bit detached to to anything spiritual at that time i was probably now 20 20 21 so i was more involved in working full time and just kind of like making sure that i had money and and it happens you know yeah uh, i i kind of became a little bit more materialistic in that sense uh, mm-hmm. then i as as life happens you know i i met my 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 wife and she happened to be mormon so oh wow <laughs> yeah so <laughs> that's a combination it, it is so then you know we we started talking about things that were all spiritual but you know she was more she was more of a down-to-earth Mormon, and I say that because a lot of Mormons are more um, extremists in some ways, um, but she understood where I was coming from, and we started having more conversations and, and this and that, so then she went ahead and started um, uh, asking if, if I was interested in, in hearing about the Mormon faith. So I said, yeah, why not? I mean, I'm, I'm always open to hear many perspectives, and I actually like that. 
So we invited the missionaries, they came in, they started talking to me. And during that time, there was around like five or six like sessions that you, you had to have with the, with the missionaries to kind of become baptized. So I had to go through like a whole um, lesson learning and, and understanding, then asking about if, if this path was true, if I felt comfortable with it. I started reading more about the Book of Mormon. And what attracted me about the Book of Mormon that a lot of people don't understand is that it's actually a, a spiritual book based on the um, Native Americans during mm -hmm. their whole spiritual transformation of learning about Christianity through you know um, the people that had immigrated from the Middle East um, to the Americas after the flood, or I, I forgot, it was, it's, it's been a long time ago. Um, and that caught my attention. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very firm about being nationalistic when it comes to, to anything Native American. I have very strong Inca blood. So that attracted me a lot. And um, I started praying about that. And I went ahead and started uh, kind of praying and, and, and wanting to receive an answer. And in a way I did, you know, I felt very, I felt peace in my heart. I felt content. I felt that this path would probably be a great new spiritual path that I can succeed in. So, lo and behold, I got baptized. I became a Mormon. And then uh, oh, wow. with time, I became a, a young men's leader, believe it or not. And uh, I started kind of, getting a little bit more involved with the church. Eventually, I got married in the temple, and everything was kind of going along the path of what I, what I wanted. I hit a crucial point uh, during a, a, a moment in my life in which I felt that, okay, I, I have progressed, but there was still something missing. There was something that did not click with me. So I started asking more about Lucifer, and I started asking more about the uh, left-hand side of, of religion, so to speak. So when I had conversations with like the bishops and some some stake leaders and things like that, they uh, would deter me from asking questions. They would actually prefer to read a few scriptures and then pray upon it, and then I eventually I would receive the answer that I was seeking. That wasn't what I wanted. I wanted someone to kind of sit down and explain things to me. Um, and that kind of put me in a weird situation with them. One day I asked one of the bishops if he knew what, what Lucifer looked like. And he said, actually, I do. So that sparked my interest. So he brought me to the bathroom hmm. and he said, look inside the mirror or look towards the mirror. I did. I saw myself. And he's like, that's what he looks like. Everyone can 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 be him, or everyone can can manifest the energy, but it's that that is not what's expected of you. You're supposed to be more, uh, uh, you know, focusing more on Jesus, so to speak, focusing more on on my family and things like that, and not question things that could deter me from the path. So that wasn't the the answer that I wanted. And that kind of started pushing me away from from being uh, an active member of the church. So I was an active member for about, I would say, a good five years. And from then, you know, I, I started going less and less to, to the services. My wife would go. Uh, she would go with, with my girls. But I, I, I would stay home and I would do meditation and I would kind of like just to start doing some some self rediscovery kind of connect myself kind of rediscover myself because I was I was losing myself a lot and um, I had a conversation with her and I said listen I'm not gonna go back to church and I'm actually going to go back to school. so I only had a, a few college credits here and there but I wanted to go back and obtain my degrees so, um, it's very interesting how the phases of life and, and how all these experiences have led me to this path. One of the first classes that I enrolled 
during that time was a world religions class and talked about all the different religions and cultures and things like that. The first chapter that appeared was Hinduism. And I was like, okay, well, I know a little bit about Hinduism. I had Hindu friends and, and I would see some things when I would go visit them in their houses. But honestly, like I, it, it never connected with me because it's not my culture, one. And two, I, I uh-huh. really didn't understand what that was. But I said, you know, this could be a sign. I'm just going to go with the flow and read. So I started reading more about the religion and the first deity that appeared on my book was uh, Shiva. And when I saw Shiva, I had a very deep connection. Just, just by gazing into his eyes, I was, I was focused. And I started questioning where did this connection come from? So I said, let me do some outside research on Shiva. And that's what I did. I went to the library at that time. Now, Google was more, <laughs> was more relevant and there was a lot of online sources. Yeah. YouTube was around. So I started uh, hearing mantras. I started uh, seeing different websites and le- learning more about Shiva. And um, I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to take a day to just really hear a mantra, study the mantra, and let it uh, hit my heart. And that's what I would do on Sunday. So as my family was going to, to church, and this is probably something <laughs> that, that they don't know that they're now discovering for the first time in this video is while they were doing their their church services, I was at home meditating, learning about mantras and having those deep connections and, and doing little mini rituals um, that I was kind of, you know, crisscrossing between uh, Wicca and Hinduism. And I started getting a lot of personal connections. So one of the first experiences that I had was I was... Um, having a very deep dream and I was feeling very negative in this dream. I was feeling very lost. I was feeling very confused. And in an instant, I heard a loud OM. So it was a very loud OM and it just resonated in my mind. And in an instant, I saw Shiva and he popped up like this and started wow. straight up look into my eyes without saying anything, um, just telling me you're in the right path i will help you and i will guide you just trust in me when i woke up i woke up crying and i have never i have had never had that experience with anything spiritual not as a catholic um not as uh, a mormon so i found that as a, a a huge sign that i was in the right path of my spiritual progression so I said, uh-huh. now I'm going to take it the next step, and I'm going to go ahead and start discovering other deities that are around. So I started learning more about Ganesha, more about Kali, Parvati, Lakshmi, and just started seeing how they all, although they were separate beings, so to speak, they were all connected, and they were part of something bigger. And I said, you know what, I think it would, it would help me kind of get more involved in the, in, in the Hindu community just to see more of a physical presence of their energy. So I started seeing if there was any meetings out there. Lo and behold, when I was living in Southwest Florida, there was a, a local Hindu group. I went ahead and I uh, started attending meetings. And they were very welcoming, which was, it was a great, great experience because I was totally different. You know, and believe it or not, at that time I had very short hair. I didn't have any facial hair. So I look completely different than what I look now. Uh, yeah. And uh, I noticed that they were just very humble. There wasn't no ex- extravagance in anything. You know, they were renting a auditorium in a middle school. And there was just blankets on the floor. And a few statues of Ganesha here and there. And that is what they used as a way to connect spiritually. And when I looked around, everyone was meditating. Everyone was relaxed. Everyone was just kind of being themselves, but also interacting here and there. And that honestly kind of, it, it made me feel at home because I had never felt that connection. So I started becoming more involved within the Hindu path. So I started doing my own pujas, which are more rituals. I started doing more meditation. 
I started honoring the deities more openly in my house, which was very, very interesting because I had to have a, a hidden altar, so to speak, for a long time. And now I'm very uh-huh. open with it. And that caused sometimes a little bit of uh, conflict because, you know, I was, it's, it was <coughs> different. And what I found was that during those times of showing my, uh, uh, of, of what I believed in and, and my spiritual path, it actually would spark curiosity and it would spark questions and, and it would actually propel me to, to learn more and discover more. So I um, started doing that for a while, for a long, long time. And then by chance, you know, I got accepted at UF. So I came up here to, to North Florida to pursue my master's degree. And uh, during my, my time here at, <coughs> in Gainesville, um, I was still going to some events here and there that were um, Hindu-related, some study groups, things like that. And I met wonderful people. They, they, they really kind of allowed me to discover more of the community side of what being a Hindu was and, and understanding of what, of what that whole culture is. And um, I graduated from UF and um, started working full time once again and now found myself away from that environment. So I got more focused on what it was to, to, to be working, you know, a father, a husband, I had to work. So my whole spiritual side took a, 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 a it, was, it was in the back of so to speak. So, oh, wow. Um, I started feeling empty again, and I was curious as to why I was having this feeling. So I still had my little altar with Shiva, and I, I asked Shiva, I said, help me again kind of have that connection with, with my whole spiritual side, and allow me to, to now be more dedicated and more, more focused on my self-ascension and my self-growth. So with time, Little by little, I started rediscovering um, new things about myself that I had that were very deep inside. I started accepting myself more. You know, for a long time, I, I, I had very bad um, self-esteem. And that kind of opened up a new perspective on, on who I was. And I had to accept myself first. I had to love myself first. And I had to push myself. And... One day, just kind of going on Google, um, I saw Lucifer's name pop up. I think it was an article or something, and I saw his, his name, and I saw the, the, the name Michael W. Ford. So for those that don't know, Michael W. Ford is an author. He's a, a Luciferian author, and during this time, he was kind of like experimenting with putting a lot of books out there, kind of getting people to his own type of path. He was a founder of the Great Church of Luciferian Doctrine or the Great Church of Lucifer. It, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but this was something new that he was kind of like trying to get more interested in the path. So I started uh-huh. seeing his YouTube videos. I started, I actually bought his book. It's called Wisdom of um, Eosphorus. I highly recommend it. And it put me in a whole new dynamic aspect of what's uh, of what being spiritual is so before i was the more humble uh, i'll do anything for the deities and i'll respect and 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 i'll do everything that's asked of me just to 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 better myself and now the whole luciferian philosophy was the complete opposite no you do the work you start reading, you do the studying, you do what you need to do. If you need assistance, we can help you. Not that we will help you. We can help you. But that's up to you. Because mm. It's all about dedication. It's all about um, self-empowerment. So if you take the time to better yourself and you dedicate the time to learn and grow, then this path will help you. And I, I, I got that, that whole message in little pieces here, you know, here, there. And, you know, I, I've been practicing this path for three years. And within those three years, 
I have grown tremendously spiritually. I have, I have seen manifestations. I have felt many things. I have um, seen many results happen based on on my uh, spell work and things like that. And one of the the, the, the the main missions that I have, so to speak, or a goal that I have, is that I want everyone to feel positive about themselves. It doesn't matter if you're Luciferian or not. You can be a Catholic. You can be... Uh, uh, Muslim, Jew, it doesn't matter. It's all about making sure that you self-empower yourself. And if and this mm. path helps you achieve that, great. And that's why I have my YouTube channels and that's why I do my videos. I'm not. It's not for monetary gain. It's not for anything like that. It's for people to really question themselves, question their beliefs, but most importantly, question themselves i think that that's sometimes we, we we lose ourselves and i've been there but when you uh -huh. break out away from that you tend to 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 really discover what's out there for you so in a nutshell that's how i discovered the bat mm. well um let me ask you something because it's something i always ask um different people like satanists and um luciferian sure is when they like portrait lucifer or any other ancient god because i don't call them demons i call them gods the, the ancient gods um they always seem to paint them or make pictures of them with like evil looking like with horns correct and you know um it's like they still take that catholic view that christianity view on what they look at like but for example, when I, I wouldn't say when I have manifest them or they have showed in front of me, but when I picture them, I picture them as like um, other type of look, like like a regular person uh, or a beautiful angel. Like when I picture Lucifer, I see him as an, an angel of light, you know, and he looks, he doesn't look with like horns and right. this evil look and with the big tongue and stuff. Sure. And it's like, why do they still take the dogma of the, the Christian and, and still use those old pictures to to port, uh, portrait uh, Lucifer in that way. I don't know if you're understanding my question. No, I know. I, I completely understand. The main reason why they do this is because it sells. You know, um, also, our, our, our easily can, can start with Hollywood. So Hollywood lately has been mm -hmm. doing a lot of these um, movies uh, with the non and, you know, they use a lot of goetic names. Valak is the name of the non, but actually Valak is mm -hmm. a He's an ancient energy. I don't call them demons either because I find that offensive to them. Um, I call them mm -hmm. ancient energies. Exactly. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it's it sells. And it's what people are most commonly, um, what people mostly associate horns and anything that's fire, anything that is evil looking to them. And it's because they have been told this from a very early age that that is what they look like. So uh, that they look like that? No, they don't. Mm -hmm. But exactly, we don't know what they look like because we don't know, you know, unless unless they they can really manifest themselves in front of you and, and, and you can physically see them, that's, that's more for a very advanced leveled uh, practitioner who has that, that blessing, I would say, that ability. But... Mm. You know, that is a main reason why they, they're, they're portrayed like that. Then people tend to to influence that by doing their own animations and their own um, videos, demonizing, so to speak, these ancient energies, because that's what's going to get people interested in. It's more of the visual aspect of it. So you lose the whole spiritual side of it. You just, you're just uh -huh. you're kind of associating the physical uh, portrayal of an ancient energy and it's supposed to instill fear on you and it's completely opposite I can tell you Carlos that I have never had a negative experience with any ancient energy and I have connected uh -huh. with Lucifer Amon Orovas um, Lilith I have connected with um, Furfur a whole assortment of ancient energies I have never felt fear Actually, I have felt love. I have felt guidance. Exactly. Positive energy. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like I, I work with Lilith, you know, um, for some reason, Lilith um, attracts me. And when I seen her and she appears to me, she, she appears to me as this beautiful female form. Correct. Um, actually, a very sexy female form, you know, and I feel safe. You know, but when I see her in pictures and stuff, she either has horns and a tail, you know, and a pitchfork. And I'm like, why do they still use the Catholic or the Christi Christian concept to make this ancient spirit look so evil? It's making the practice or the religion seem more evil than what it is like a very, very spiritual practice, you know, like Lucifer, the bearer of light is, is out there to give you light and give you knowledge. Exactly. Yes. You know, he gives you knowledge and he, he, he opens the doors for you. But when, you know, people that are just starting this religion or this practices, they go and look at pictures of Lucifer and they see him with horns and, or they see him with a goat face and, and, you know, they see all this blood people do and stuff. It's like it makes the practice look evil. Exactly. And that's why a lot of people are scared. And instead of them running to get knowledge, they go other worlds, other well, I mean, where like the African traditions or they go into the Hindu traditions because they seem like that is too strong for them. They make the, the ancient gods look too, too evil, basically. Correct. And, and, and that is an unfortunate aspect of the modern times that we live in. And even back then, you know, they, they always try to demonize um, these ancient energies. It, and to me, that, it, that was part of the, the, the main agenda um, with any type of Abrahamic patriotic um, religion is kind of uh, putting that fear into people, not to question authority, not to question uh, any type of higher power. And a a ancient pagan gods and goddesses were now were made evil just to also destroy the culture of these, these people that were practicing um, their customs. So there is a lot that goes behind as to why they're, they're, they were portrayed that way. They still continue to be portrayed that way. But fear is something that people have to eliminate from their minds. And fear yes. holds, holds everyone back from becoming the best person that they could be. And, and it's very frustrating for mine because sometimes I still encounter people in this path that are fearful. And it's like you you, mm -hmm. you contradict this path by being fearful. It, it doesn't make sense to me. And once you break that barrier, you have the ability to, to do anything. You have the ability to connect with any ancient energy. You have the ability to, to, to grow physically, emotionally, mentally, in every which way. But mm -hmm. fear holds people back. And when it comes uh -huh. to Christianity, Judaism, um, uh, Islam, the main, main religions, I would say, is fear and control is, is their way of making people subservient or submissive and not allowing Submiss individuals yeah. to, to be the best person they could be. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I always question that because I've been doing some research on Ki King um, Paimon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that yes, right. Yes, yes. So I'm doing my research, and it got me interested because I was watching the movie Hereditary. Hereditary. Yes, yes. You know, I, I, I but Hollywood, that. yeah, Hollywood makes it look so evil, people flowing up in the air, yeah. the head being chopped up, you know. But then when you do your research, and you're like, wait, this this is a, nothing to do with Hollywood. Nothing. You know, and then I started... In, in, I started invoking the energy and I felt him behind and I started asking him questions, you know, sure. and he answers them fine. I didn't feel like fear. I didn't feel like I, wa I was losing it. Actually, he went away because my dog started barking. He was like, he was afraid of my dogs, you know, wow. and then he, boom, he, 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 he ran away, but he was answering my questions, you know, and I felt like I was comfortable and I was like, well, am I doing this right? You know, because me, myself, I don't follow the books and invocation. Mm -hmm. I do it on my own and, and the best of my abilities because the author of that book basically invented that invocation just like anybody could write a Correct. book and anybody could invent an invocation. Yes. So that's you being 
spiritual and in your own way you are invoking uh those ancient um spirits or ancient gods and goddesses you know but it's just hollywood has also helped portray those ancient gods to look evil you know like in the exorcist and then you have the the uh the exorcist series that just passed which was great by the way you know um so it's just i don't know it's like but what i what gets me upset is that to this day we still or a lot of luciferians still use those images and instead of bringing more people closer it's just like frightens them you know that's actually a message that i received um during a, a ritual session is and I, and I got this from, from Lucifer, and it was to, to get more people to discover him and to get more mm -hmm. people to learn about him and to do it the right way. And that is why my messages, my videos, everything is just very positive. As you had mentioned, he's a light bearer, and... His light has to be. Yeah. It, ha it has to be shown in 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 the best manner because he is he's willing to teach. He wants to teach. He wants humanity to be the best person, the the the, the best race that that can exist, living race. Um, but he also understands our limitations, and he understands that humanity can also be cruel, right? So um, yes. He's not going to interfere in anything. And once again, we're held accountable. We have that free will, you know. But at the same time, if you do things the right way, they will finish the right way. But you have to have confidence. Exactly. You have to have that, 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 that desire and that strength. I hear you. So you know it's it's a it's a whole combination of of, yeah. of a lot of ways, but what 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 I can tell everyone that's, that's viewing this video, and I want to give a shout out to everyone that's saying hi, um, is that if you're right now feeling very very doubtful, if you're feeling confused, if you're feeling that you're doing everything in your power but nothing is manifesting, the best thing that you can do that actually has helped many times is to have a raw and honest conversation with whichever ancient energy you're working with for me it's always lucifer but i also have a very deep connection with prince bezelbub i don't know if you're familiar with him um and yes yeah so he actually i don't know if you noticed this but he actually manifested his presence in this video um in the beginning he is always represented by either moths or um, winged insects and that's just the way he manifests for those that follow him and I had a few fly above mm -hmm. me around this area in the beginning and that gave me the like that peace of mind confirmation that this conversation will be very successful and it's going to reach those that are meant to hear it mm -hmm. now when you talk about the magical aspect, um, are you talking about spell working? Because I normally don't see many uh, Luciferians do like spell working sure. or magical working. Um, now, is that like on the negative side or or or, or self girl magical? No, or you can do anything with that. So, honestly, you can do anything, and um, when it comes to to anything that's that's spell work. I do it for myself and I do it for others and it's a way of helping manifest what you would want to happen in your life or for others, you know. For me, there are some Luciferians that don't practice it. You don't have to. Honestly, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can just kind of like just have that connection one on one. I do it because I want to be um, able to to help others achieve the results that they would, would like. Um, and if I'm able to offer that service for them, perfect. Sometimes I go and seek others that can do those things for me. Um, uh, you know, it all depends on, on what results you want. But what some people sometimes get confused about is that 
as soon as you know these these spells are done, they instantly want results, and they think mm-hmm. that in this path you can instantly get what you want, and that's not the way it works. And you know, you will experience a lot of positive things, a lot of negative things when it comes to spell work, but it's because it's a learning process and you're working. So I'm also kind of the same way. Like I don't I don't follow step by steps when I see different books and I see different types of. Uh, uh, of uh, steps or lessons, or I go with the flow. I go with what feels right for me, and it has been the most successful aspect of that. Okay. Now, um, that's I heard that Hikate belongs into this um, realm too. I thought Hikate was like um, different from the Goesia and stuff. Mm-hmm. What, what is your uh, opinion on that? First, have you worked with Hikate? Yes. First and foremost, I want to honor and thank Queen Hikate beautiful beautiful energy she is she's a queen and her energy is amazing not only is nurturing it's very it's very loving she can help you break a lot of barriers and she can help you learn about the craft but you have to put in the work um yes she is definitely part of this this realm I always compare this to Hinduism in the, in, in the way that uh, within Hinduism, there's a whole pantheon of different ancient energies that you can work with. And the same thing with, with the left-hand side. There's, there's a lot of different energies that you can work with, both masculine, feminine, sometimes or crisscross. It all depends um, on, on what you want to achieve, what connection that you want. So, yes, Queen Hecate is part of this, mm-hmm. definitely. Okay. And the other question. Uh, Astroth, female or male? I heard many stories. And you're great th- question, great question. So, with like in any ancient energy, they will manifest in whichever way that it's that is most comfortable for you. For some, Astroth manifests as a male. For others, female. In my case, female, blonde, short hair. She manifested to me looking like the um I, I don't know if you've seen the show house of cards um uh, but the yeah okay so the wife of the president that's how she manifested herself to me and mm. for, for others has been more of a, of a prince type uh very 1700s elegance type uh look for others it's it's more of a goth looking male Ancient energies will, will manifest to you the way that you feel most com- most comfortable with them. So that's how I base my experience on, on your question. Mm, okay. Yeah, because there's not much information out there because I want to start working with, for me, it's a her. It's a she. Correct. Um, I want to start working with her, but that's not like many um, information in there. And for some reason... Every time I invoke her or when I hear the word Lucifuge, Ruffle Car, it's like I get this chills, man. And it's like my head starts like fading out and I start getting tunnel vision. I actually was just working with him um, a few minutes ago before we started this conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's just you can feel the energy, you know. Yes, you can. Um, It's like a bitch slap. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but a, a wake up call, and it's like strong, and it's like something pressing in, 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 in your chest. I don't know if you have felt that, you know, but it's not like a dangerous energy, but it's just you can feel that it's very strong. Um, Correct. So, um, I don't know if you ever had that feeling of and, and press, pressing on your See, I, that's my thing when I'm confused too, and that's why I do these videos because. I don't know that much about Luciferian. I thought Luciferians was about worshiping Satan and, and, and worshiping Lucifer and the dark side and stuff. So I myself was um, confused. Although, you know, I've been getting some information mm-hmm. from uh, a female that's close to me. Well, Amy, she uh, actually asked some questions there too. Um, well, she introduced me to this and introduced me to uh, Cauldron of the Black Flame. Okay. Where I'm getting a little bit more, more information. I don't, I don't, I don't, okay, well, anyway, um, no, it's okay, I don't, okay. Um, okay. yeah, um, yeah, like, when he was in, like, a trance, like, actually, like, two times, on two 
his ends were doing something with Lucifuge. And um, actually, the, um, what what came out was kind of like, I mean, I don't want to be saying something that's not, I mean, okay, well, I feel like I was hearing somewhat of like a sinister laugh on two separate occasions. And so I don't know what you would think about that or if you've ever experienced anything like that. Okay. Well, that's, that, that's actually a good question. So I'll answer that. Um, but before I do, I know exactly the, the energy that the flow that you're feeling because I actually had that about a month ago. Um, I did a ritual connecting with both Lucifer and um, the Ezelbub. And they, well, after I did my, my whole ritual session, my blood, I can feel my blood running through my veins. The energy that was pumping through my body was, exactly. was crazy. Yes. I felt my heart beat hard. And I was in an elevated state. And I was like that for 24 hours. And I, I couldn't sleep that night. I was tossing back and forth. And I can feel their presence right next to me. So I know exactly what you're talking about because it's it's a great it's a great feeling mm -hmm. when you have that. Now to answer the the other question, um, when you connect with these ancient energies, sometimes um, they don't come alone, and you you also have to 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 realize that these energies, although they're they're very powerful, they, they have companions with them, right? Some of them are lesser level. And mm -hmm. They, they are like commanders, and they, they basically kind of you know try to fill you out to see if you're being respectful, to see what you're all about. Because as you're discovering them, they're discovering you. So, th so they're gonna throw these little things here and there just to see how you react. And if you react very respectfully and you're very humble about it, um, then you have passed the test. And it's a way of just kind of seeing where you're. very good question because a lot of people that are are new to the path and want to oh i think i lost them okay so i don't know if you guys can see me um so for for those that are seeing my video right now so for those that are new to this path um you have to really be attentive as to what's going on around you you have to be very attentive as to what you can hear, what, what, what you're seeing, because you are not alone. These ancient energies are testing you. They're, 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 they're seeing how, how you're able to, to, to react to their, their challenges, so to speak. Um, so I'll wait to see if he connects again. Let me see if I can put him in. And I think he probably lost signal, so let me see. But in the meantime, you can actually ask me questions and I, I can answer them. So let's see. So yes, ask me any questions that you would want as I try to connect him here. So for those that are seeing my video that I lost the other Carlos, um, this is kind of a first video on, on discovering the Luciferian path, what to expect from it, what it is, things like that. It's okay. I'm I'm here, so I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, get him again, but he's not appearing. It's okay. Well, you know, this is very interesting because questions like that are exactly what we need to answer. You know, and this is a way of seeing how we deal with with these situations so it doesn't surprise me that maybe his connection cut out maybe the information that i was giving him he probably wasn't ready to hear it so think about it that way but everything happens for a reason let me see if i can connect with him again here and you guys can ask me questions too Please ask me questions. I, I, I like to answer. Yeah, it's not letting me connect with them. So for everyone that's just joining me, we're talking about the Luciferian path. Very good question, Vanessa. So how I connect with Lucifer very easily. 
it's using a candle and um, incense. That basic setup gives me the necessary ambience to connect with him. And I'm very, I'm very open with him. I'm very honest with him. I, I, I connect with him more mentally as to what I'm feeling, what I would like to see in my life, what challenges sh should I should I experience to to grow. That that's how I connect with him. With Hecate, it's the same same situation. Um, there's sometimes a little bit more involved rit rituals with this path. That's something that I'd rather not get into too much detail here. Um, but I will talk about that in future videos. So I actually have two channels that you can see me on. I have the sigil and I have Los Media Studios and both kind of are Luciferian oriented and Los Media Studios is more about the creative side and the sigil is more on the spiritual side so um, I can definitely do a video about that. Okay. Yes, I, I heard <laughs> it, it happens, you know, it happens with technology and that's okay. Um, it's like my phone, I think I'm at probably 35% battery, so hopefully it stays on, um, but that's okay, it happens. Yes, Lucifer is a very loving energy. Any ancient energy is very loving, as long as you approach them very respectfully and humbly. And that's something that a lot of people get confused about, you know? They think that you're supposed to be this, do this whole elaborate ritual with all these types of um, offerings and all these types of, of of steps and you lose yourself in that you know i that's more for the people that are into the um, ceremonial aspect of magic and they feel that that is their best method then you know that's what they do so he's back so let me see if i can connect them all right he's 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 coming online so bear with me here All right, so it says adding. So we have to wait to see if he's uh, if he shows up. If he doesn't, let me try something else here. Oh, maybe. Oh. All right, so it says adding again. He requested, and it. Oh, there he is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I guess I wasn't ready, like you said in the video. I, I have two phones going, though. <laughs> um, I wasn't ready, like you said oh, in the video. Right. But right. um, somebody, somebody's here saying, I want to know about the evil laugh. What's the evil laugh about? Yeah, you say we don't, we're not ready, but let, let it out. Let's hear it. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to, to, to any type of, uh, of working with ancient energies, like I had mentioned, there, sometimes they come you know, with, with companions, and it's a way of just testing you, and they manifest <clears throat> your environment to generate sounds. So you may have heard an evil laugh, um, but it could have been a combination of just different vibrations in the ambience that, that generated that. That's a loud muffler. Um, so it could generate from that or it could be that you are now at a higher level of understanding when it comes to working in, 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 in rituals and you actually heard mm -hmm. a laugh mm -hmm. of one of them so you know that's something that you can you can ask so, so the next time that you connect uh, with him ask him if he's alone you know and, and see if you can hear more more laughs don't don't think of it as something negative well you know what think of it as something I'm... positive Another thing is that, like, um, they'll basically say over and over, you know, they won't exactly, like, say who is, pre who, who is presenting themselves, and then they'll just say, like, you know, there's, like, a lot of us, and we're always around. But they're, like, very always, like, general seeming and never seeming. Others. So you or get it's like so you get like um if, I'm like, like if you want to talk to me be specific yeah okay so that's gonna happen and that's uh, and that happens all the time and reason being again is because 
they they have they're not underlings. That's not the the, the, the right terminology, but there's there's ancient beings and energies that are below that are below them. So they're never alone. And th- some of them call them jinn. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with this terminology. Um, some of them also uh, they are kind of connecting now to our modern time so they don't know what they're experiencing themselves so they're kind of also seeing what you are like what is this why why are you so it's it's all about kind of them discovering you and you discovering them so yeah you you will get mixed responses i i have gotten that but you will get the answers that you want because you're going to feel that's coming from the source that you're connected that's with. exactly what happened to you because i had a question and the best response that have put could have possibly been given to me was given to me and i was like oh my gosh you know i was like of course they're going to tell me what i want to hear you know whatever definitely yes, yes. it's like yeah. i don't know how to feel about that but you know it happens it's like it's know, nice to hear but then i'm like I'm like it's too, too scripted. Yeah, yeah. Stop, 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 stop so, playing with me. You know. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And, and and what I would recommend is if if you don't use a, a pendulum, you can definitely start putting that within your, your 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 ritual sessions. That way, you can ask those yes and no questions um, and get a little bit more clarity. But you will never. Well, and this and this. In this, in this, in this thing, I was, I was the one. I will say, being possessed by channeling. Okay. Um, and, I mean, I'm an, I'm an espiritista. I don't know if you know about espiritistas. Yes. Um, I do. So, so I was, I guess, possessed, channeling. I don't know. I don't recall most of it. But she said that I was saying that we are many. Uh, we are many. Uh, there was a lot of things that were said, but yeah. yeah. They, it was. Vi- it's always like very not specific, and I'm like, okay, I don't know how to channel this conversation because, you know. And sure, then I'm sure, open. Sure. I'm like, tell yeah, me what you want to tell me, and then it's like, well. Well, that's okay. the thing. They they will not tell you specifically what you need to hear, because they are very cryptic in the way that they manifest a message and you you could get a part of a message in a dream and then get another piece um through a physical manifestation or a life experience and then when the dots connect you will know and then you will piece it together and say oh wait now i know what they meant because i i have lived through that and that is just their way of making sure that you work hard and that you're, you're dedicated in learning their answer and also doing your part, you know, your, your research to see what they meant. So sometimes their, their whole messages could be cryptic that way. And that, that's actually a good thing because that, that, that I would say, motivates you into, into learning more about this path or any path and then just seeing what, what's out there to, to discover. Okay. So anyways, um, I know your battery is running low and it, it's, it's like slowing down here. So um, any messages you would like to give um, people that want to start this practice and, 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 and um, like start looking into it, you know, a beginner? Sure. So for any type of beginner, if you're interested in this path, the first thing that I can tell you is have a a one-on-one with lucifer remember he's a light bearer and he's going to open up a lot of opportunities for you he will help you tremendously in understanding what you need to do to not only learn more about him but more about what you need to to grow as a person so it's not just a spiritual growth it's also a physical growth it's a, a mental growth. Mm-hmm. It's an emotional growth. So the first step is to establish that connection with him. You can do very, 
very, very easily, is, and I actually had mentioned this uh, earlier in the video, a simple candle, a simple candle, um, and some incense just to test the ambience, just to put yourself in a, in a, in a, in a state of mind. Mm -hmm. But you can have that one-on-one. -on -one. I actually sometimes have those conversations in my car, just like you're, like, like you're having it with me. And yes. um, it, it's what makes you feel most comfortable that you can have that type of deeper conversation and connection. But for me, what helped me was using ambience and using candle with incense. Then as, as you start you know, learning more about this path and you start seeing that connection grow and grow, then you can enhance that. Then you can say, okay, you know what? I want to connect with Astaroth. And just to see what what Astaroth can can guide me with, and Lucifer is actually a good introduction um, maker between you and those ancient energies because they they honor him, and that actually that's something that I wanted to touch base on that you had mentioned is the the word mm -hmm. worship, right? Mm -hmm. We don't worship. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we don't we don't worship, and I yeah that, yeah, and and I say that because. I want people to understand the difference between worship and honoring, okay? Um, when you honor an ancient energy, you are recognizing their presence, their role, their energy, um, and you're thanking them. When you're worshiping an ancient energy, you become uh, a servant to them. You become a, 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 a another piece or, or you know, you're, 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 not, you're not bettering yourself. And... Uh, that is exactly what they they don't want. They want you to honor them and recognize them, but not to worship them because they they have many people that that do that, you know. Okay. And so it's all about being respectful. Um, but I encourage everyone if you're interested in this path, one is to connect with Lucifer. Then two, take the time to study, take the time to read. I have over 400 PDFs of different perspectives on this path, on the different Goetia energies, on, on, on the different paths. Um, I have books from um, this part of the world, the Middle East, some in Spanish. And the more you open yourself to understanding different perspectives of, of this path, the more that's going to help you understand what path works for you. Okay. And use YouTube. YouTube has a lot of good videos to learn about experiences. Uh, many channels out there that you can see, you know, what could work for you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, I, I used to refer people to other, um, you know, when they ask me, I'm like, well, I don't know, you know, look at, look at so-and-so guy or look up so-and-so guy, you know. And then I find them like fighting on YouTube and stuff and, you know, throwing at each other, making, I'm like, wow, you know, but, you know, but now, you know, it's like hearing you, it's like a different side, which makes me feel comfortable that I am probably on the right path, you know, or, or, or looking sure. at the right thing, you know, cause the other perspective that I was getting was more like a, of a dark side an evil side of Luciferium, you know, um, maybe and that's mixed actually, with... I actually made a video on that. I don't know if you've seen that. No, I haven't. Do you want to share your YouTube page? Um, yes. Or, so, or you have a yeah. private blog. Yeah. So I actually have two YouTube channels. I have the sigil. Um, so you can go on YouTube and put the sigil and I'm the only channel with that name. Um, and there's a video there. I have many videos, but there's one video that I talk about the cons of the left-hand path. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I wanted to put out there because people need to understand that although this path can lead you to, to growth, there are others who use it as a way to abuse, as a mm -hmm. way to take advantage of, and as a way to um, put that negative energy into, into, the, into work. And... Uh, I highly recommend watch that video. It, it'll it'll give you a deeper perspective as to the topic. Um, okay. And then I have a, my blog, um, which you can access through the YouTube channel. But in a nutshell, it's thesigil.wordpress.com. 
Um, and then I have my other YouTube channel, which is Los Media Studios. And that's more of my creative side. And that's where I do my offerings in video format for the Ancient Energies. What's the name of it? Los Media Studios. All one Los word. Oh, Los yeah. Media Studios. Okay. Like Carlos. Yes. Para los. <laughs> exactly, okay. yes. Okay. So I have um, my most popular video that I have there. Um, when it comes to anything spiritual, is um, I, I made an offering for Astaroth. And it's funny that you mentioned her. It's because that is one of the most popular videos. And um, that was a offering that I made for her. And she was very happy with it. Uh, I've heard that from other people that have used the video to do meditation. So hmm. I highly recommend that you watch that. And then I have other videos there, uh, more about... More, documentaries and my experiences covering sports you know i'm a huge fan of river so i've yeah. gone to the many games and then my coverage so it's a combination of everything yeah i mean yeah i mean although we all know that boca junior is the best and barcelona yeah you know we know that but <laughs> everyone has an opinion right? <laughs> you know well you know Thank you, Carlos, for, for spending this time and sharing your knowledge, guys. If you have more interest, you know, will you be willing to, to um, receive messages from people if, you know, it's possible? Yes, they if, if you have any questions within this path, if you need some guidance, please send me a message. You can, if they want, they can send it to you, and then you can send it to me. Um, okay. You know, you can send me a message or write comments on, on YouTube. I always answer all my comments, and that is something that I love to do because I want to make sure that everyone gets feedback, and I find that as a great tool to learn. So, yes, messaging okay. and commenting. Okay. Well, thank you for, for, you know, giving that knowledge and your time, you know, and um, I guess that's it, and may you have uh, many blessings and continue your, your your process, you know, in teaching and giving knowledge to others, you know, especially people like like us, who want to start but are very confused and don't know where to start, <laughs> you Definitely. know. So, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, no. Thank you, thank thank you for the opportunity to to talk about this path, and mm -hmm. thank you for the opportunity to to really connect. I think that I will learn from you. I know I will learn from you. And yeah, and then we will learn, learn from, from each other. Yeah. Exactly. So yes. maybe so later on we could do. Yeah, maybe later on we could do a more detailed video because that's the other thing. There's not many information out there about Astroth. Correct. I agree. Yeah. And yeah. believe it or not, I have been planning on doing more, more of this path, but in Spanish. And I feel that a lot of, a lot of Hispanics, not only in this country, but Latinos in general, all over the world, they are unfortunately obsessed or indoctrinated with Catholic mindset. And those yes. that, that truly want to learn about this path, they don't have a lot of mediums or they don't have a lot of ways to learn. And well, you know, that's one of the, the, the pages that I was in. It was in Spanish. Yes. Um, and it was a Luciferian slash satanic page. And they keep saying there, you know, a Luciferian has no feelings. You know, uh, if you're going to hurt somebody, hurt them because you're going to get joy by hurting them. And I was like, what? So I didn't even last like three months in that page. I left real uh, fast. And that's it was just totally like... against. Yeah, no, that's that's totally opposite. They So a, a good thing to also answer here is what is the difference between being a Satanist and being a Luciferian? That is a good question. Um, yeah. A lot of people get that confused. So those that are more of the uh, satanic mindset are more of the carnal, uh, more of the materialistic aspect, and they are not even followers of a Satan. Mm -hmm. They are more of the um, personal gratification, let it be through food, let it be through personal pleasure, let it be through whichever means, without considering how it's going to affect others. And that is just a, a perspective of the many perspectives that this path can, can lead people. Um, 
a Luciferian is more the philosophical, higher spiritual, reflective, and um, understanding point of this path in which you respect others, others respect you, you take in everything and then make it what's best for you, but always being humble and respectful. Exactly. You know, I thought that's when I was confused and I was like, wow, you know, you're killing animals just for your self, self satisfaction. That's, you know, but anyway, exactly. well, you know, we, we should make another video later on because it's, you know, um, about that, you know, so there'll be probably many more to come. Once again, uh, thank you, you know, and I don't want to take more of your time. Any questions, oh, guys, okay. please feel free to comment. You know, yeah. I cannot answer them personally because I'll be answering them wrong. You know, but I'm pretty sure Carlos, you know, this is in his page. So, you know, the other Carlos will be able to answer them in a better uh, way that I would. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm open to, to messages. So just send me a message. Um, you can put some comments here. Uh, I'll answer the last question, I think. Uh, well, not question, comment by Vanessa, where she states um, that they use Baphomet as an image. So, um, yes, unfortunately, Baphomet has been used in many ways to stir that fear, that, 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 that evil mindset of what this path is. And it's totally against what Baphomet represents. And Baphomet is more of the uh, intersection of male and female energy, of symbolism with uh, different aspects of the snake and, and the goat. So there, it's like a, it's a very symbolic puzzle piece, so to speak. And that's something that's something that we can talk about in a future video. I think I learned that a French priest drew that image, and it's actually a, um, Gaia Sophia. That's supposed to be again or whatever. Yeah. So that, that image that that image was drawn a long, long time ago, and um, it was it was used as a way to once again put put that fear, put that confusion. Okay. Okay. Well. Using, I guess I guess answer her her comment. <laughs> they probably had a very, very twisted way of, of that empowerment, and that is where people get it all twisted when it comes to our path. Right. Well, once again, you know, let's thank you. <laughs> um, thank, oh, you thank you guys for being there too and, and, and doing your comments. I'm going to share this to different pages, and I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel, too, as well, so you can see the, see the video again on my YouTube, you know. So you have a blessed day, brother. You, too. Thank you very much. And okay. Ave Luciferi. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay.